and that message is universal, not only for one, only for Muslims, it is for the entire world. And it is because of that message uh, that it, it, you know, it, we, we need to spread this message across, uh, across uh, our province, across our city, across our uh, municipalities, across the country, across the world. And uh, I'm so glad that uh, uh, that Pusani Association has been uh, uh, hosting this program for I don't even know how many years, ever since I've been in Calgary. And I'm so thankful to uh, be part of this program, to be part of this gathering. Uh, while I'm here, I just wanted to uh, just touch base uh, on something that the government is doing for newcomers. We are all newcomers here, and uh, our government, provincial government, is uh, trying to uh, help newcomers settle here. And in that regard, we have uh, 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 we have uh, passed a bill, fairness um, for newcomers, actually, fair registration practices act, bill 11. That is uh, that bill helps us uh, facilitate uh, in, in our settlement getting registered in our professional uh, uh, associations and all that. You should probably take a look at that. If there are any questions, please, uh, you know, you can always give us a call. Also, we are trying to, uh, try, you know, trying to optimize our immigration, economic immigration system here for Alberta. In that regard, if anybody has any questions, please do give me a call. Uh, I'm always here, just like I was here before, like 40 years ago. I'm here to help and, uh, and, uh, and, and make a difference, make a difference not only for our own community, but make a difference for people across Alberta. And thank you very much for the invite, and may God bless you all. Thank, thank you. you. Muhammad Ali Muhammad. Thank you, Mr. Yassin. Um, Imam Hussein made the ultimate sacrifice for social justice, social justice, truth, and dignity in the face of corruption and oppression exhibited by the self-proclaimed caliph of that time, Yazid the son of Mawia. Imam Hussein stood by the principles of Islam till the very end, and his legacy continues to inspire millions upon millions each year around the world. Now I'd like to take this opportunity to call upon one of the youths from our community, Sister, Sister Asfa, to come and say a few words. Please recite a loud salawat for Sister Asfa. Oh. Respected elders, guests, brothers and sisters, salamu alaykum, peace be upon you all. All praise and glory belongs to Allah, the creator of the universe, the creator of you and I, and the one who has passed his divine light through a chain that is the truest of all mediums. It has passed through the chain of all the prophets of God, and in its full glory manifested itself in the Holy Prophet and his holy progeny, peace be upon them. The necessity of the divine light passing through these purest mediums was so that humanity could receive the perfect means to be illuminated forever. These are the beings of light that we gather here to remember and commemorate. How can one describe consciousness? How can one define honor? How can one explain patience? All such human values are unworthy of being synonymous with the reality of Hussein ibn Ali. He has truly manifested the peak of every human principle. He gave life to human consciousness. He redefined the meaning of devotion. His perseverance has humbled the notion of perseverance. Steadfastness was unable to comprehend the endurance during moments of hardship. Imam Hussein was not a one-dimensional human being. He is not who you and I think he is. And I, a mere servant of his cause, is not worthy enough to stand here and tell you about him. There are simply no words that do justice. The principles, values, and these beings of, beings of light themselves are universal and eternal. And I say this with the utmost conviction because its proof and evidence is in front of our eyes. The martyrdom of Imam Hussein set forth an awakening which could not be contained in its time. It was such that the essence of Hussein transcended into the future and his light emanated throughout the world, surpassing all boundaries of time and space. The event of Karbala was not a battle for power. It was a battle of doing the right thing and standing with the truth even in the face of insurmountable odds. Hussein stood with just 72 who were devoted to his cause against an army of 30,000. And his martyrdom at Karbala proves, 
proves the moral victory of right over wrong, justice over injustice, principle over compromise, and the victory of the oppressed over the oppressor, and the ultimate victory of blood over sword. Hussein's martyrdom is a lesson teaching humankind through the inscription of blood on the scrolls of human history how he conveyed to the world through his struggle the meaning of life. Imam Hussein was a witness of truth and falsehood, a witness who, like the human heart, pumped blood through the vessels to the organs to keep them alive. Like the heart, Imam Hussein sent his own blood to the society which was advancing towards moral death and had submitted under tyranny and oppression. Imam Hussein was like a candle which lit up the world and dispelled darkness. The memory of his rising and martyrdom has been immortalized through his impact he had on the hearts and minds of the people. I often ponder upon this love for Hussein, despite the 1400 years between him and I, despite the many miles between his land of martyrdom and I, there is something that makes Imam Hussein an elixir for our hearts and souls. An elixir is a material which ancient alchemists believed to have existed in the world, and this material had the capability to transform one matter into another, and an elixir is said to make gold. An elixir perfects that which it comes in contact with, and the poets have said that love is the ultimate elixir because of its capability to transform. When asked, so Imam Hussein is the elixir of love for you and I, and that is because whoever comes in contact with him, whoever has a love of Hussein in their hearts, and whoever upholds, their princi upholds the principles of Imam Hussein, can be transformed from dirt to gold. When asked of what she thought of everything that happened in Karbala, Lady Zainab, sister of Hussein, looked the enemy in the eye and said, I saw nothing but beauty. That beauty that she saw was that Hussein's love and revolution had the capability to transform a nation dying under oppression into gold. Hussein's love had the capability to transform the heart of the enemy, Hur, into a heart of gold. And 1400 years later, even if Hussein did not remain, the source of his light never went away from this world. That light is waiting to penetrate our hearts and soul if only if we let it. Because even if Hussein was martyred, light cannot be slain, even with its head raised on a spear. Wow. So today, when you leave this seminar, take a moment to learn about his mission. Alongside Hussein, there were men, women, children, and elderly. There is room for everybody in the caravan of Hussein. There were men over the age of 80 and children under the age of 10, and they all courageously stood against the oppressor. There was a black man and a Christian on the side of Hussein. There were women in his caravan that represented his voice. It was the sister of Hussein, Lady Zainab, who was seen as the leader of his resistance, and she was an outspoken symbol against the tyrant regime. It was Zainab who addressed the enemy with such courage that her sermons made those who were present tremble. It was Zainab whose eloquent tongue nursed humanity to keep the message of Hussein alive. Therefore, Karbala cannot be limited to a certain religion, gender, or age. So let Hussein's remembrance awaken and inspire your heart. Hussein is that being which unites us under these universal values. And there are as many bridges to him as there are people in this room. Before I conclude my speech, I'd like to share a personal story of mine, and I'm sure some of you might have heard it. Um, and, it, and it talks about my connection with Mom Hussein, and I hope that this story inspires you in a way that it inspired me. So there's this quote of Imam Hussein that goes, Oh my followers, remember me when you drink refreshing water. I remember the first time I heard this quote, it was in a majalis, um, and I was maybe six or seven years old. And when I heard it, I remember my ears perked up and I listened to this part of the lecture very attentively. My, my mother always taught me about Imam Hussein, and his caravan, and how they were uh, denied water for three days. So I knew that he had a distinct connection with water. But I wasn't able to grasp, it, grasp its significance at that time. So I took it very literally. In my head, it was a simple equation. Drink water, think Hussein. So from there, every time I drank water, I knew I had to send my salutations to him and remember his thirst when I was quenching my own. And throughout the years, the, after hearing more and more lectures and learning more in depth about his mission, I found that this quote still stuck out in my head, and I would always circle back to it, but I wasn't sure why. And I began to think why Imam Hussein asked us to remember him specifically when we drank water. What was so significant about water that he made it a symbol for the remembrance of his azab? It was just water. 
Throughout the years of my life, I searched for the answer, and I wasn't content in just receiving something that simply scanned over this code. I wanted it to relate to me, and I wanted it to hold a special meaning to myself, but I couldn't seem to figure out where I fit in all of this. Anyways, several, several years later, it was one day after another Majalis on the drive home, our car stopped at an intersection. And on the side of the road, I noticed a small flower that was withering. And I was watching, as I was watching the flower, it began to rain in a matter of seconds. Water, I thought. And I continued watching the rain as our car drove away. And under the dim light of the street light, how those drops glisten on those petals. And as we headed home, I spent, it the, I spent the night pondering over what I had seen. And that quote again stood out in my head. That rain created a feeling within me that I can't seem to describe in words even today. It was an absurd yet calm feeling, and it was as if it was trying to tell me something. The next evening, on our way to the ninth Majalis, just before the day of Ashura, I saw that flower again, but this time it was not withering. It stood tall under the light, and its petals spread out around the black eye in the middle. It was beautiful, and it was all, it was alive. And this is where it all clicked. The thoughts were racing in my mind, and our car was moving again, but I felt like the world around me had been put on pause. Water brings life. I realized here that water is more than just a simple mixture of hydrogen and oxygen. Water is a source of all life, and Imam Hussein connected himself to that. He connected himself to that which gives me life. Hussein was not telling me to just send salutations on him when I sipped water. He was telling me to let his remembrance revive my heart and soul, to let his principles and values flow through me like water, to let myself be the flower and him the falling rain. Thank you. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Please recite a loud salawat for Sister Asfa. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Karbala and the day of Ashura, the tenth day of Muharram, the day that the massacre occurred, can teach us a lot about unity. It's truly and utterly about good versus evil. This is what united people alongside Imam Hussein on the battlefield of Karbala without water or food. To continue carrying Imam Hussein's legacy, his followers unite people like we have done today. Um, to bring together people for goodwill, charity, and tolerance. I'd like to remind you again of the bake sale going on outside. We're gonna continue on until the end of the program. Now I'd like to call upon Brother Aziz to come. He's also one of the youth of the community to come and give a quick, quick speech. Please recite a loud salawat for Brother Aziz. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters. Uh, peace and blessings be upon you all. Please recite a loud salawat. So I just want to start off with a quick uh, narration or a quote from Imam Hussain before I start my topic. And Imam Hussain says, quoting the Prophet, peace be upon him, that the Prophet said, that, O oh people, if you see a tyrannical ruler who is oppressing and trans transgressing against God, against the Prophet, and oppressing the people, and you do nothing to change that situation, as it happens a lot in our life that we see a conflict abroad or we see another group of people fighting, you know, we, we remove ourselves from that situation or we close our eyes, um, that's not my business. Um, the Prophet says that if you do nothing to help the situation, then you have taken the side of the oppressor. Because if you stay silent and you, and you don't move to help the oppressed, then you are helping the oppressor. And um, as the raising MC said that, you know, the mission of Imam Hussein wasn't for any worldly desires or to gain power. It was, you know, to save the religion of Islam, to be a champion for the poor and for the oppressed. And as Mulana Sajjafri taught us yesterday night that if you don't understand the purpose or mission, uh, the destination of something, then you'll never appreciate the, the struggle or the means that it takes to get to that destination. Um, and so if you don't understand that Imam Hussein's mission was to save Islam or, you know, to reform the society, you will never give Ashura or Imam Hussein the importance that it deserves. And you know, we have the saying where we say there's no uh, place like Karbala, no day like Ashura. And the reason is because Karbala is very unique in its historical, uh, in, in the situation. 
because um, no matter what, what religion you follow, no matter what walk of life you're in, whether you have a family or you're a student, etc., cetera, um, every nook and cranny and every insignificant detail of Karbala is actually filled and is rich with lessons and wisdom for us to implement in our own lives. And one of those things I want to talk about is having uh, our, our self-reflection and uh, you know, really understanding our self-worth and to see if we have the strength and willpower that when, when the situation arises and we have to choose between truth and falsehood, will we, will we have the strength to choose right? And to really talk, talk about that topic, I want to take a short uh, excerpt from a speech from a speaker named Hussain Rajab Ali uh, talking about the companions of Imam Hussain to highlight um, how to kind of analyze ourselves to see if we have that strength. So, um... so he says that Imam Hussain chose his 72 companions very carefully. And he chose the people that would never change their hearts. Because even if one of Imam Hussain's companions on the day of Ashura had abandoned their post or ran away from the battlefield or ran to the enemy side, it would have marginalized and would have affected the message of Karbala. It says in the Holy Quran, in verse 33, uh, Surah 33, verse 23, among the believers, there are men who have been true, men, th those who sacrifice. So who are these 72 soldiers who stood by the Imam? That when the Imam kept saying to them by name, that leave, Mus Muslim Ibn Usaja, Habib Ibn Mazahir, go. They want me, Imam Hussein says. They want my head. This Yazid wants me to pledge my allegiance so that he can manipulate the religion of my grandfather. However, each time his companions, all of them, their only reply was that if we are brought forth and killed a thousand times, then we would never leave you, O Hussein. That's why Allah loves these individuals so much, because they are special. The question you and I must ask